They are images which tell their own story. The coastal road in Gaza City, an area destroyed weeks ago in Israel's offensive. The crowds were here for food, flour from an aid truck. The gunfire, say locals, was the Israeli military. We can't be sure. Gazan officials have been using live rounds to disperse crowds. Either way, it's panic and chaos. We call on the entire world to see Gaza's people, he says. I call on the Muslim world, the Arab world, the UN to bring food to the people. In the United Nations, a body which has shown its limitations so much with this war, another vote for a ceasefire. Those against? And another American veto. But this time, an apparent shift in America's position. While we cannot support a resolution that would put sensitive negotiations in jeopardy, we look forward to engaging on a text that we believe will address so many of the concerns we all share so that we can have a temporary ceasefire. The use of the word ceasefire by an American as part of a resolution they plan to table soon. A shift? Well, at the State Department, it was all about semantics. From a policy perspective, we want to achieve a, a temporary stop in fighting. You can call that a ceasefire. You can call that a pause. Ultimately, we want to see the fighting stop so, civili so uh, hostages can get out, hostages can be released, and humanitarian assistance can get in. And so if there is a shift in America's position, it is subtle to say the least. The debate the UN Security Council is having is the same one they've been having for months, the nuance between a pause and a ceasefire. And on Israel's proposed invasion of Rafah, the Americans are not saying don't do it. They're just saying don't do it without a plan for civilians. There's a difference there. Whether Israel does have a plan for civilians and whether it's viable is not yet clear. But Prime Minister Netanyahu's messaging is typically straight. We are committed to continuing the war until we achieve all of its goals, which means the elimination of Hamas, the release of all the hostages, and the promise that Gaza will no longer pose a threat to Israel. There is no pressure, no pressure that can change that. 100,000 Gazans are now either dead, injured, or missing. Those are United Nations numbers, a UN unable to find agreement or peace. Mark Stone, Sky News in Washington.